Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to take a look at Storm OS, an Arch-based, user-friendly Linux distribution. But before we get started, please do me a favor, like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the videos and like what the channel's doing, you can buy us a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links are in the description below. Storm Linux, Arch Made Easy. You go over to their website at storm-os.godaddysites.com. I'll be sure to include that link in the description below. And this is what you get. You just get met with their logo. And then you scroll down and it just basically states, Storm OS is a Linux distro based on Arch, developed by Ben Fitzpatrick with the contribution of Silent Robot Seeker, Razor1981, and TJ Wolf. Included software is Steam, Discord, Wine, Lutris, Gimp, LibreOffice, Zoom, and much more. And then they have some reviews that have been done by other people on YouTube. That's the home. And when you go to download, you get the option of downloading from SourceForge, or you can go to Mirror Links, which downloads directly from Google Drive. So what we are going to do now is we are going to open up Storm OS. So let's close out of that. Zip on over to GNOME Boxes and open that up. And if you download Storm OS, throw it on a USB or open it up in a virtual machine, this is the screen you're met with. It doesn't have a welcome screen. It takes you directly to an install prompt. All you have to do is just click cancel. And it asks you, do you really want to cancel? Click yes. The install prompt disappears. And then you're met with the desktop. Up on the desktop, you have some icons. You've got Axel 8, Install System, Menu X, Play Movie, WGetM. If you click on Menu X, and it basically states, Hello, live user. Welcome to Menu X, the Storm OS edition. For this program, you need the following program, Zip, Unzip, and Curl, and use the Bash shell. You can create up a backup directory, start general backup, start general copy. Just a lot of different options down through here where you can create zips, unzip, update mirrors, sync and update. Everything right here in the console. So that is menu X. Let's go ahead and close out of that. You do have a beautiful wallpaper here. What I'm going to do is right click and configure desktop and see what kind of choices we do have. And once those populate, let's move this down here, make it a little bigger. And as you can see, you've got different wallpapers here. A couple of them that are with Storm OS, but most of them look to be KDE based. You could always change it if you wanted to, if you wanted to switch over to something like that. Click apply. I kind of like that one, so I'm going to leave that one up. Let's close out of that. And of course, with it being KDE, you have one panel on the bottom. If you go down here, you've got show desktop, date and time. Of course, your hidden icons, clipboard, night color control, vaults, brightness and battery, lock key status. Then you've got internet, USB connection, volume, update manager, and then of course, your notifications, letting you know there are updates available. If you want to make adjustments to your panel, all you got to do is right click, enter edit mode, and it gives you the ability to edit. You can make the panel bigger or smaller depending on your personal needs. If you go over to the right, it says more options, panel alignments, left, center, right. Visibility, you could have always visible, auto hide, windows can cover, windows can go below. And then of course, if you go over to the left, you can add widgets. And once those populate, you can scroll down through all your widgets and see that you have a ton of different things you can add to your desktop. Now, if you've watched any of my videos in the past, I went over this. And of course, if there's not widgets on here that you need, but you want something else, just go up to get new widgets, do a search, and you can download those right there. So let's go ahead and close out of that and close out of that. Back down to the bottom, you've got Firefox. You've got Dolphin File Manager. Let's go ahead and open that up. And Dolphin is just a fast file manager that lets you get things done. Over here, you have your usual suspects. And right here, you have all your home folders. If you want to make your home folders bigger, just zoom in or zoom back. And you can make them as big as you want or as small as you want. And then if there's items over here that you don't want listed, like recents, just right click, hide, and then search for. Let's right click and hide. And then that gives you a little bit more room over here. And of course, if you come down into the open area and right click, you can make these icons a little bigger. Let's bump those up to large. That way it makes them a little easier to see. So we'll go ahead and close out of that. Then you've got their software center. Let's go ahead and open that up. And it looks like it is Discover Software. And it is populating. So let's go ahead and pull it over here. Let's make it just a tad bit bigger so everybody can see it. And right now it's showing you create a Digicam, Caden Live, 
Of course, your update section says there's 89 updates that you can install. We're not going to do that because we are in a virtual machine. And then you can go up here and you've got applications, application add-ons, plasma add-ons. And then down here you have installed settings about. Let's go ahead and check out settings. So we've got core, extra, community, multi-lib, storm OS. I don't see unless it's under community. Let's do a quick check. If I go over to applications and let's search for something like MailSpring. Okay, so they have flat packs installed. It doesn't give you the option for AUR. Let's see if there's a place to turn AUR on. And for those of you that might not know, that's Arch User Repository. I don't know if it's under the community or not. Not really sure because this is Arch and they're using the Discover Software Center. So let's look further into it. Maybe it's somewhere else on here. Let's open up the app menu. And what do we have over here? Development. We've got Cuttlefish, Plasma Engine, Games, Lutris, Steam Native, and Steam Runtime. You do have Lutris and Steam installed out of the box as well as Wine. I have not done any gaming on it, so I can't give you a heads up on whether it is good for gaming or not. But if this OS is something you might be interested in, download it, throw it on a USB, give it some persistence, and maybe try a couple games on it. Then you can go to Graphics, Internet, Telegram Desktop, Thunderbird for your mail, Zoom for Zoom calls, Discord, Multimedia, MPV Player, Office Document Viewer. So you are going to need to download an Office Suite. Something like LibreOffice, OnlyOffice, WPS, something like that. Settings, add and remove software. Let's see if that brings up the Discover Software Center. Okay, so that's the same thing we already know. This is different. This is different, guys. Let's go over here. Let's go to Preferences. Okay, so you do have the ability to enable the Arch User Repository. Okay. And then go back to General. You would definitely update your mirror list, but it doesn't give you that option to update your mirror list. Interesting. So we can close out of that. And then I guess if you just go over here and do a search, something like Caden Live, it brings up the AUR. doesn't bring up the official repository because we are in a live mode and it hasn't refreshed. So, okay. So you do have the ability to download from the Arch user repository. So you've got two ways to get software on the operating system. So let's go back over to the menu and then back down to system, discover, dolphin, gparted, HTOP, let's see what kind of resources we're using. I have issued this virtual machine three gigabytes of RAM. At present, we are using 964 megabytes, which isn't too bad. It's less than a gig at rest with just the console open. It's not as light as, let's say, XFCE. It's running more in the neighborhood of what you'd be running on Manjaro, which is really impressive. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's go back over here, settings, system. Install the system, manage printing, SUSE Studio Image Writer. That's nice to have. If you're running Storm OS and you want to try out a different version of Linux, all you got to do is download the ISO, open up SUSE Studio, throw in a USB, and you can burn it right to the USB and be ready to go. It's a very good tool. I use it a lot. Uh, utilities, HP Device Manager, Mousepad, Software Token, Vim, Axel 8, Menu X, and those of you who haven't heard about Axel 8, I, I pronounce it Axel 8. It's actually AxCL8, but it's Axel 8 to me. If you open up Axel 8, it'll bring up your download link. Let's say you're over watching something on YouTube. This is my channel, and you want to download the video. Just double click, right click and copy, come back down to Axel 8, right click paste, and click OK. And it'll have you come up here, name what you want the name of the file to be. Once you name it, let's say video. Click OK. And it'll let you know download has started, download will finish. But because I'm on a virtual machine with no persistence, it doesn't have anywhere to download it to. But that's just a quick way to download things off the web. So it's a handy tool. And power session, log in, log out. Let's take a look at system settings real quick. It comes out of the box with dark theme. You can always adjust it to light theme. Single click to open, double click to open. Let's check on appearance. And of course, we're running Breeze Dark. If you do want to get new themes, all you got to do is zip on over here. Definitely go with the highest rated. It'll load those up. Once you find something you like, install it. Once it's done installing, close out of this. Pick it and apply and you're good to go. 
You can do that with application style, plasma style, colors, windows decorations, icons, cursors, fonts. If you want to change the size of your fonts or change your fonts, just go over here, click on adjust all fonts. If you want to change your font, just click on that box, select your font, then click OK. And if you want to change the size, font style, you can. I'm going to go ahead and change this to 12 real quick just to show you and apply. And it changes your font colors across your operating system. But these are your settings. You can come over here and definitely change anything you want to on this operating system and customize it specifically for your needs. And then down at the bottom about this system, it's KDE Plasma 5.23.1, which is the most recent version of KDE. QT version is 5.15.2. And kernel version is 5.14.14-arch-1. So it's using the Arch kernel in the most up-to-date Arch kernel, and then it just gives you your hardware specifications. I do have to say, with me being a Manjaro KDE user for four years, this is pretty snappy. It's pretty quick. It's easy to get around. Things open quickly, but out of the box, it seems to be doing pretty well. So what do you think? Is Storm OS something you might download, throw on a USB, put in a virtual machine and take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Before you leave today, please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and like the videos that we're doing, you can buy us a cup of coffee. Or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video and I will see you in the next video.